of the 12, 12 glass scenes What jail son in, act that fiend Last week she trooped eight hours And they still trying to move they sour Eight's plowing, we trapped here Slaves to the white man's black fear Kids get clapped here Last year my son got murdered I was asleep but the gun I heard it LAZ, my fault, man. I forgot to tell y'all was a monstrosity on that microphone. You heard if you need a collab, send me an email at the genpopllc at gmail.com or DM me on Instagram at Real St. Laz. You heard? Z Lord. And yo, shout out to the bro Sha Sha. You heard home. Beat that whole case. Laid up on Rikers Allen for four years and change. You heard? My bro is back in these streets working. And that's a whole fact. And we still working with these stories. Documentary coming soon. It's going to get ugly. You heard? But yeah, man, if you from Harlem, make sure you get in them comments and let me know what projects, what block, what Ave in Harlem you repping. And that's a whole fact. Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man running around the hood like He-Man. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you follow Life Through Galleries on Instagram. If you need professional pictures and content filmed. We get down there to throw gloves on and he hooks on me immediately. No gloves, no. he rocks me, bang. I jumps up, I take him in his dick, I dog him. Yeah, we all, I'm talking about we street fighting now. This shit is fuck everything and nobody stops nothing. Um, a dude, no, Alex, um, Alex Ramos, he was a professional fighter there, right? And, um, we used to call, so, like, this was, um, this was, like, 2001, maybe 2002, some shit like that. And, um, it was crazy. It might have been later, because it might have been after that, because, um, this was out of block. This was the dungeon, calm stop. And, um, yeah, I think it might have been, like, 92... Yeah, I say about nine, about 2000, 2001, 2002 for sure. Because Pee Wee was there, Wolf was there. It was a lot of there. K.O. Smitty was there, Fog was there, Skip was there. Skip just came out the box. Comstock was, Comstock was crazy, but they had the on the block gym was the ring. You brought your mouthpiece and your gloves, and the police just didn't even come in the gym, B. They let you rock. If you stepped out the square, you lost. And you know the round circle with a ring, like the like, like the um, the basketball, the half court, the basketball court. Yeah. That circle, that was the ring. When I when I got the ring, the ring got there. This is my man. The ring, nigga, hands look like mitts. We we got tight over there because we knew we knew each other's people from way back. Whatever. He just got out the box. He had a bad life fight. Some shit, I don't know the particulars of it. I just got out the box. So we try to stay out the way. You give a nigga two packs, you get out of the block. But we know out of the block was worse than fucking population, but all our mans was in out of the block. More people was getting cut and stabbed in out of the block, and, out, and this is called out of the block, than damn near pop, than population in car stop. But everybody wanted to go there. That's where all the money was. That's where police just didn't bother to go over there. Shit was just different. If Sabu was over here like 30 years and everybody had time and, and had life been, so it was a serious atmosphere. They, they had dice games going on, poker games going on. She was just different. The trailer was right near next to Honor Block. So Honor Block, the trailers, dudes was getting trailers like every 45 days just because you was in Honor Block and you were standing out the way. So police left us alone, but we were sending niggas out of there and critical, and it was mostly from the ring. But they was telling niggas like, listen, man, if you put down for the clinic or the hospital, you getting kicked out the hot, kicked out of the block. So a lot of niggas holding broke jaws down and all kind of shit. Then later on, why they going to the hospital to get taking shots and magnesium infusions and shit? It was crazy. But anyway, Alex Ramos gets there. And, you know, he, he's he's allegedly locked up for weight. So the red was like, yo, you can't get in the red, you can't spar him. He's like, well, I'm professional, nice. The man was like, yo, B, 
you cannot get in this ring. Now, I'm trying to be respectful. He's going to that first me and say, yo, nigga, you a rapo. So Durant, Durant put his mouthpiece in when he said it. And um, start walking to the start walking to the circle. So everybody got quiet. It was like, all right, cool. We we'll gonna see what he's hitting for. And now uh, you know, rest in peace, Alex Ramos is dead now. Cause you know he had a, he had a fight over his mouth. And um, this was this was Sullivan. And um, nigga knocked him out. He fell in his head, died, whatever. But um, you know, rest in peace. Shit happens. It, it was crazy. And then he disrespected some of my people on his visit and lost the fight and died. But um, the win, they put the gloves on them. Mind you, over there, we fighting with bad gloves, B. So you fighting with like four inch, four, like four ounce gloves. So every hit is like, God damn. A jab is feeling like a hook. A hook is feeling like an overhand. It is ridiculous. So fights don't last long down there. Booze is rocking. Now, Duran's, Duran's a pro. And you got... Alex Ramos approach, records the day. He's supposed to be super nice or whatever. Duran took it straight to this boy's body. Bing, 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 bing. Straight to the body. Crazy left hook. Do 8 2. The third one pulled him down. Duran taking the gloves off before they, like, everybody even realized what happened. Like it was over. Son, don't come in here no more. Spank him. Now, his other dudes who ain't like it. And you know, dudes about to draw knives and all kind of bullshit, cause you know, everybody just can't take an ass over. Everybody don't expect to see their man get spanked. Cause I guess he was somebody. There was some heads, there was some real loud niggas that was backing them up. But they was my mans, they was good dudes, you know what I'm saying? And um we got to talk shit out, and it was like it was just it was just you know what I'm saying, this and that talking out. We used to hold on up. We got paper in this case in the library. This nigga had ripped out all his cases from the books in the law library. So we had to go on the computer to find this shit, you know? And, fi- and then finally, like, before he was going to war, finally he was a rape home. But it turns out, like, shash, I'm the troublemaker. And I was like, nah, I'm not the troublemaker. I never even knew nothing about this. So a dude calls me out. Now, mind you, this, this, this dude... The dude who called me out, he, he, he's a bug out. And I really don't want to say his name. Everybody knows who he is, but everybody can remember this incident. Because we get down there to throw gloves on, and he hooks on me immediately. No gloves, but he rocks me. Bing. I jumps up. I kick him in his dick. I dog him. Yeah, we all, I'm talking about we street fighting now. This shit is fuck everything. And nobody stops nothing. Because remember, he rocked me first. Pawn self. But what you said he was tight about, he was tight that you brought up that you was talking about son paperwork? Yeah. Because I went to the law library and I'm like, yo, how you let this nigga rip these out the books? Like, you back that garbage up. Like, because that's your man. You, you, you still held him now even though he got that kind of case. And this nigga was found guilty for DNA. So it's like no disputing what this nigga did. And on top of that, it was a minor, so that made it worse. Yo, that one was a DNA, but it was a minor. So you first Take- degree, nigga, I had 25 first degree, they, they washed him for that shit. A minor. And um, you're not supposed to be in no position to even be accused of some shit like that. That's why the man really specked the nigga, and he like, yo, this is the ring, nigga. Only men step in this ring. And uh, he was like, fuck you mean by that? He's like, nigga, he, he was a rape on me, no fucking man. And um, he spanked him. His other, his man was mad about the shit. Stole on me, and yo, it was a ill. It was, it was a street fight. We real got dirty. We got on the ground. I mean, this thing with elbows, knees. Nigga bit me. I had to get a tetanus shot. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was ridiculous. But I dogged him. I, I really, I really fucked him up. I had him in eye like three solid times. Dead in that one eye. He detached his retina. I fucked him up. Man. And um, dad, dad started to close the gym for a minute because um, this nigga had to go to the hospital. Everybody was like, yo, you know, you go to the hospital, they gonna shut it down. And then he was like, yo, I fell. They were like, what the fuck you fall on? So I'm under 72 hour investigation and shit, bullshit for fight, but anybody say nothing. So after 72 hours, they let me back down, shit went back to me. But the win, now he got beat for all these niggas' niggas, and um, 
some of them is his man. It's, 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 it's some real power struggle shit going on with them down there. So he started training me. He said, yo, I'm going to take a shot. Because it was like, yo, some, some Puerto Rican racial shit going on. And Duran was... He was like, yo, because they ain't, well, they ain't really want to yeah. get me. Because they ain't like that. They've been there for a while. A lot of them old, old racist Puerto Rican. Some of them just like that. And Duran wasn't with that. So he took me and he started training me. He started training me. And I started destroying niggas down there. It, 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 the gym took on a whole different effect because he was like the head of Puerto Rican. <laughs> you know what I mean? So everything fell in line. And um, that was my boy. Last time I heard, like, I. Like for me, and dad took him to um, Wendy's and he was suffering from cancer. Cancer. I got him some shit and went to Wendy's and I seen him up there. And he was fighting that. And he was still at war on the streets because you know jail shit is jail shit. And um, he did about four years straight in the box. I seen him again and dad said he looked healthy. Look, well, that's what's up. He's like, yeah, I beat that shit. I was in with the case. He's like, nah, cancer, nigga. I was like, yo, I love you, man. I was happy, man. He's like, yo, he's like, yo, brother, you rocking your beats and I'm working out on the back of this and that. We start jogging. We was in down there for like maybe like three days or some shit. And you know, when they let us out in the wall, you only get like one, two, so he's jogging together. I want to see if this shit was right. He was really back in shape, man. Then I, I got free, I seen him, and um, he had his girl when we stayed shopping, so that's what made me bring him up because I just seen him, man. And he, he looked it good, man. That's my point, man. The man's a good dude, man. And I wanted to talk about that memory because real shit, it wouldn't have been no ring down there if it wasn't Durant. He established that shit. He started that out like, yo, tell me, he's like, yo, police, man. We big, man. We got this. We old school. We ain't gonna, we ain't, we ain't gonna kill nobody down here. But ass whoopers is necessary for the respect level to be a certain way. And they jacked it. And he, yo, he brought gloves down and mouthpieces. And we was just, we trained and spanked shit. <laughs> and it was crazy, man. It was good. Niggas came in. We had we started teams. That shit was just different, man. It broke up when the, I think Durant the Durant the stabbed some dumb nigga, and then when he went to the hospital after that, that's when I think they diagnosed him. And if it wasn't for that, him getting to that shit, he would never even knew he had cancer. Some dumb shit. So him having that little knife fight kind of saved him, man. But. He'll tell you about this though. He'll probably tell you better than me, Nick. But I was there for him, and, and his struggle was real you know, to fight uh, a life sentence. Why are you fighting cancer, man? And people dying on you, man. I admire his struggle. People say I'm strong, man, but it's other people that are super strong out there, and they don't get the credit they deserve, B. Because a lot of us went through hell in there, and we was innocent, man. And even if we wasn't innocent, we shouldn't have had to suffer that bad. Because a lot of the shit we did wasn't that harmful. A lot of that shit was blamed on the environment, the oppression, the, the manipulative old timers that got in our heads and made us do shit when we was young. So uh, a lot of shit wasn't on. Um, we, we can't take responsibility for a lot of the bullshit we did as young. Maybe most of it, I say. Because we was conscious and reckless. But when you get in there, and then it's like you suffer twice, man. I mean, your family suffered with you. That shit is crazy, because you in the cage, it's out of cage. Then they talk to you like shit, treat you like shit. And then you're oppressed by your own. It's a predator atmosphere with apex predators, and then you want to be predators. And, you know, right now, the, the crackheads and, and, and them damn dope things run the jails, because you know, on the streets, they stand in place because there's guns out here. But you know, you check, you check your guns in at the door. So when they go in there, then them boys can scrap. They start running shit and taking over shit and fucking shit up right now. So it's ridiculous. You got fiends beating motherfuckers' asses, man. And then you got these racist police who promote the black on the black. And it, it's the worst of the worst, man. So when we started making this program and Duran and Reddit that, that shit, it didn't last long as it should have, man. Then we wanted to implement that shit and make it legit and get the ring down there and started petitioning for it and shut all that shit down, kick this all out of the block. And we been, after two, three years, we the box came back, made it back to the years later, they still ain't none of the black and out of the block. <laughs> that shit was crazy. We was back in population in trenches and we hated that shit. That was crazy, man. That year, man, after he lost the family, I lost my grandmother, 
It was in September 19, 2003. I was, I was a constant man, and that shit was, man. It was, it was bad, man. It was, it was real bad. It was just, it was hurting us. The only way we could get away was honor block. Then they took that shit from us. Well, you gotta have like three years with no ticket. That shit was damn near impossible. They give you tickets for not tying sneakers all the way up to the top because they say it's gang affiliated. They was inventing shit just to make tickets up on you because tickets was five dollars. So they taking money out of account is going into them. So they just slugging people for anything. They're shirting a button all the way to the top. And that shit is so your people sending you paper and you might owe like $50 in tickets. So you're not even getting the commissary or nothing. That shit is crazy in there. They put me in hell of a stock. Now, I was a stock for six years, man. In 2006, man. That shit, I went to the box like nine times. That shit was disgusting. And you know the worst of the worst was there. What's this? this I forgot this. What's the dude that that shot all those people on the on the Long Island Railroad? Colin Ferguson. Yeah, he was there. He is a piece of work. Dude. He was in. He was in the stock. Yeah, he was in the box. A cold piece of shit. Insane. He telling all people, yo, he just came from the visit. He smoking weed. You can smell it. Yo, he was just everybody hated him. It was good dudes out there. <laughs> My boy shot Quail. Shot Quail, they had segged him. Quail was segged most of his life for like six, ten years for kites. Other niggas writing him kites, and they segged him for it. Niggas like, yo, big homie, how you feel? This name, oh, this is a gang guy, give me a year. Bullshit, B. Bullshit. I'm, I thank God Quail home now, man. That's, that's my family. I love him, man. But, yo, I was in the witness. I was helping him with all them 78s and everything, man. They just kept that nigga locked down in, yo, in the box. Yo, we had to fish through toilets to give them food. Like, we had to get um, dental floors. We'd go to the beat, we'd get to a fight, go to the box, just to get to be on B2, because he was on B1, sad. Blue Boy was down there, too. Only way we could sit there and send them food was through the toilets. So we'd take all the water, all our toilets with a cup, drain that shit down and put it in the sink. Then we put the motherfucking on put our wires down, I, um, put like, a, you know, the toenail clipper, put that as a weight, put it down there, and then flush, hard, foo, 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 flush, and then we keep yanking until they connect, they connect here, pull it in, I keep flushing, he be like, yo, I got it, he pull it around and said, you know, different floors is wrong as hell, and then we was using the plastic gloves that we used to clean ourselves, you know, the, um, the surgical gloves, what you mean, though? Niggas was able to send food from one cell to the next cell through the toilet? Under us to the toilets. Under us. They call this the underground. Railroad, B. I was on B2. Shockwell was on B1. The box box. And um, we were sending through the toilet on dinner floors. That, you know, that's that's something that only work in Comstock? Only concerts, the only place I ever heard of it working, seen it working, and did it myself. That shit crazy. Crowd Valentine was there, Killer was there, yo, Big Dog was there. It was so many dudes that was there, but that shit was crazy, yo. Wolf was there, Pee Wee was there. Everybody seen Comstock Box, man. Believe it. If you went to Comstock. You see Comstock box. I don't think nobody slipped through there without seeing their box. It was just that kind of jail, bro. Shit looked like, you know, it's dreary, dark, cold. It's all dark, dark green. And, um... But it ain't the, the same... It ain't them cell doors, right? It's regular doors. No, it's cell doors. It's, it's, it's cell doors with the bars just like on the regular oh, tiers? Electronic bars from a bubble. Pink electronic. Out, you in a cage inside a cage, so you in your cell, then it's the tear, and the tear is caged off, and it's a catwalk, then it's the another cage, then it's the windows. So you're looking through your bars and two screens and the gate just to look out a window. And that's where your air come from, the only air. And there's cameras everywhere. I mean, the, 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 the stock was the stock was crazy. Matter of fact, um, Tank, Tank had gone 15 years in, in Comstock Box. He, a nigga, the nigga had, I think, threw shit on him or some shit, said some foul shit to him. It was nasty shit, but 
on, on, on camera, he blew that nigga through the bars, crazy. <laughs> they gave him 15 for that dumb shit. He did the whole 15 for it, man. But the only way you get to him is through the bars. You get tight, man. Nigga be throwing features at you, telling you to dick all day. And then, and, 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 you know, that shit, I know, I know the feeling, because I was put through it, man. And he just, Tag it just couldn't couldn't handle that shit. He reached out through the walls and blew the shit out that boy from like his shoulder to his belly button. Real stupid shit. And they had it on camera. And he they just he, he's already in the box here, so he just took him to court. <laughs> shit was crazy. And they cuff you when you come out for the shower. But you know niggas know how to slip the cuffs. Niggas slip the cuffs, come out. And yeah, blow somebody on the balls. I ain't never played the balls. I ain't never talked to somebody close to the balls. None of that shit. I know the rules. Rules be talking shit on the balls and get this shit twisted with, with a scalpel or a gym star. And, and there's nothing you can do because your gate is closed. You be in there looking stupid, bleeding. <laughs> yeah, that shit's crazy. You be in yourself tight. They <laughs> can just blow you from your shoulder to your hip. And you like, oh my god, your gate is sealed, locked electronically. You can't do nothing but wrap a sheet around you till the sisters come. Nigga, I know I would have a heart attack. I know I would have a heart attack. But nah, you ain't dog me like that, yo. And I seen it done. I don't play, I'll talk to you from my toilet. Nigga, cut to my bars, I don't shake hands, none of that shit. Matter of fact, Blue Boy pulled the nigga arm out the slot and, and broke that shit all kind of ways. Crack, crack, crack. Because he, he was deported downstairs on B1 with Quail when it was down there. <laughs> when Blue Boy and Allen now, man, fighting that thing, I hope he beat it, man. God bless him. I love Blue, man. I hope he beat it. I hope he come home, man. I'm damn sure I'm rooting for him, man. Well, whatever he's going through, man, I hope he beat it. I hope he get around. I hope he get home. That man did over 37, 39 years, man. And he kept it tall every day. He never changed, always embraced me, always the same. It's like the man, no matter where he at, they're always the same, always embraced me. I love him, man. They, they never change, man. And I appreciate that. I come out here, and it's dudes that I thought I knew, they changed. These dudes I, I, I met in jail and they didn't change. They still got their moves, still got their prince moves. And you know, they still function. They say we can, you know, we can become our own kind of fucked up mentally, but a lot of us are still functioning. We still working, we still taking care of our families, we still being responsible. And we got little twerks where we can't be around certain bullshit. We can tolerate certain bullshit. We can't take being talked to certain ways. And you know, right now out here like sucking my dick is a thing. I'm not gonna never get used to that shit. I don't tolerate that. I ain't with that shit. Now see, that's the thing. These kids do it, chicks do it, but I just didn't grow up that way. A lot of us didn't. You understand why we punching your mouth over that shit? It, it's like super disrespectful to us. But I mean, I, I learned to just stay away from certain bullshit, certain crowds that even indulge in that kind of language or talk like that. That's why I've been going to the same meetings that the people been having when they trying to get me home, like my industrial workers in the world. And um, a lot of these organizations, um, the Revolutionary Party in Brooklyn, like I'm going to get together tomorrow in Brooklyn, man. And these same people that supported me, now I'm going to party with them and support them. And, you know, I went to... I went to so many events with them, yo, it's been dope, man. And they're good, and they're activists, and they really help it, and they're campaigning to get people home, man. Because right now, yo, what they're doing now, they got this narcotic squad or some shit, where they're waiting till you sit down somewhere in the park. And I learned these zones, people tell me stay away from them. But you be in there chilling, you shake hands with somebody, they rush you and say, you got an observation cell. And then it's like, it's running through the police and then when they ain't find that know you or nothing, then they let you go, but they put you through some bullshit. So in certain areas, I don't even go. I was like, what? That's what's going on over there? Cool, thanks. Not going over there. Yeah, <laughs> you, you can't. You can't be in no hot. You can't be yeah, in no I hot mean, drug I area. Like, yeah, fuck that. I've been in the house lately. I had like four people got arrested in certain areas. I'm there. I'm safe. Yo, you can't get no trouble with the house. Real shit. Real <laughs> talk. Nah, but after you come home off the island from doing four years straight, a nigga <laughs> supposed to be in that crib. If you ain't. Handling some business A nigga supposed to be in that crib Getting his shit together Because there's no way you could pop up 
I'm in the house from four or seven o'clock every night, dude. That's how you got to be on it for a minute. You can't come home and rush right and start rushing right into the streets and running around the streets. Take care of everything I got to take care of. Yeah, man, just take care of your business and that's it. Somebody told me that the other day, like, yo, your, your, your wife is a lucky woman. I said, why you say that? She's like, yo, because you always home or you always next to home. And I was like, man, listen, at my age, at my age, if a nigga still feel like running the streets all day, all night, something wrong. Now, I ain't gonna fight. It's a lot of my niggas, B, that I'm proud of. They not in the game no more. And they schooling me about certain shit like the home helping job. I went and got that. Like, I'm trying to, I, like, I got my I got my driver's license in hand. I'm applying for my passport. There's certain little shit that I need help with that I never had, I'm getting done. You know what I'm saying? And I learned a lot of niggas out here don't have driving licenses, dude. Hell no. I don't understand that. How? I can't survive without a driver's license. You know, certain dudes don't even have ID, dude. You know, what, what the fuck that nigga Colin Ferguson was in a box for when he was in Comstock? Now, I don't even know. I think that, no, I think he was just sad. They ain't one of the population because he killed so many people on Long Island Railroad. It was family members of the deceased people there, and they, they would have chopped them up so it's their population. So he didn't have their population nowhere because, remember, he, he had a lot of people on Long Island Railroad, and it was certain family members that's incarcerated that's looking for that man. And they're not playing. That nigga probably was going crazy in that box all day. He, on the, he lived on the gate. He just, he's a gate monster. <laughs> what do people give you a warning? Police give you a warning. Go down there. Don't talk to him. What the what? fuck he was doing? Like just beefing with everybody? If you lock next to him, you didn't get near my man Tone. Yo, Tone, Tone on there. Tone did like twenty years in that box. This nigga stressed Tone out like the whole twenty. So I seen Tone. Tone had a great beard. It was bald headed. I was like, what the fuck? Last before that, the nigga had waves with a goatee. I seen that nigga spend some time next to this nigga. They got this boy with a great beard. I was like, yo, Tom, what's up? <laughs> I seen him, he's going to visit. He's going to go down in the box with this nigga. I was like, because where they had was a whole different part of the box called like F1. F1 is like a super seg stew. I've never been over there, but it's like B1 is a dungeon box for segs and all kind of hardcore niggas. Then you got B2 is a box, box two, same shit. But F1 is like, Around the corner, down the block, under the jail type shit. Stupid, sectioned off. And you just hear stories when you see niggas just over there, when you see them on visits. Or when they come out the box, like, you're over there, B? Word. <coughs> that shit nasty. Nigga said niggas wasn't getting no sleep next to that nigga? Yeah, Blue Boy was over there for a minute. Well, Blue Boy was only for a minute. They kicked him out of B1 and put him in F1. And um, he said, he said, you shot, ain't no bomb me. I said, yeah, I ain't mean, easy, yo, but I didn't get no niggas nerves, you know, that nigga. Because Blue, he's, a, he's like a super avid reader. Like, Blue taught me, man, yo, he said, live in a book. He said, we was about to live in the books. So I, I don't think nothing bothered him down there. And um, that dude there, would, he said he would kick your wall all night, all morning, and just, you know, he was one of those kind of bug outs. Tripping sweat, kicking your wall just to have you up all night. Stupid. This book by Jerry Spence, this shit was my Bible. Jerry Spence is the most winning lawyer in the world. Like, the, the book is called How to Win Your Case. And that shit has been my Bible for like 10 years. And, um, in, in, in that book, man, that shit teach you step by step how to smoke these cases. And I started giving them out, passing them out. These idiots, they didn't even want the books. What you mean? You said you was you was trying to get niggas, other niggas to read that book? Well, oh, now two dudes I did give it to went home, man. One from the Bronx, two, your homie. My other boy, Wes, he read the book. He beat, he beat the case. He had a homicide. My other man from the Bronx asked, yo, he read the book, he beat the case. They stuck to the script. There's no, see, no, there's no such thing as, as a perfect conviction. 
If they got you, they got you, they gonna smoke you. But if you know you innocent, man, you gotta fight tooth and nail like you innocent, B. Cause, yo, if, if you just lay down and leave that shit in the lawyer's hands, nigga, they get tased whether you go up now or go home. They don't be giving a fuck. You see what I went through with Jeff. I beat that case. He didn't beat that case. Why the wrong? Yeah, man. If I'm innocent of some shit, I can't. I ain't gonna be able to sleep until I beat that shit. What, yo? You see, I wasn't nigga. I, yo, you see, I take pictures. Of, I was going to Coney Island. I go to something like the beach. And she like, I'm going to parks. But yo, I, other than that, I'm in the library. I was studying, buckling down. Every time you call, you say, "What you gonna read?" Studying. I, I got what. Right. Of the 1212 blast scenes, but jail son in act that fiend. Last week she trooped eight hours, and they still trying to move they sour. Eight plowing, we trapped here, slaves to the white man's black fear. Kids get clapped here. Last year my son got murdered. I was asleep, but the gun I heard it. LAZ, my fault, man. I forgot to tell y'all was a monstrosity on that microphone. You heard if you need a collab, send me an email at the genpopllc at gmail.com or DM me on Instagram at Real St. Laz. You heard? Z Lord. If you need professional pictures and content filmed, 